we notice in the Acts of the Apostles how it was in prayer, not sitting around a table, that the voice of the Holy Ghost was heard, set apart for me. Now, we have, it's interesting, this name of Saul still coming in at that point, showing how close this is to the origin. He is eventually to be called Paul and Barnabas for the work that they have been called to. I remember years ago hearing this very good lecture by Dr. Bobby Jones, who was an expert in Welsh history and literature, but also a great believer. And he went in this vein. He was quoting what had happened some time previously in what he referred to as a Hain Gorf, the old body. That's the old Presbyterian church that eventually became an nonconformist body and prevailed in the north in Wales. They came out of the Anglican church essentially. Well, they had been founded on the basis of revival, the outpourings, and the elders were becoming aware that the Holy Ghost seemed not to be quite as active as before in Wales, and so they thought, well, it's time we had a revival. So the first thing they did was to hold a committee meeting. Hmm. I wonder how much of the Holy Spirit is to be found in committee meetings. He was found a lot in this prayer meeting at Antioch. And actually I remember in student days later on in Bangor being quite moved actually at how active the Spirit could be. We were in deep prayer mode one evening and the Holy Spirit put on the heart of more than one present that something was wrong. One person in the deep prayer going on said that there was an image of something white with red in the midst. And immediately a girl another part of the big room said, I'm getting it too. And this white is a bit of hospital linen and the red is the blood of an aborted baby. Somebody in this group has had an abortion. It turned out to be the truth. Now that wasn't a meeting around the board or a commission or a committee. It was availability. Availability is the key word in the service of the Lord. It has been noticed that there is a big difference historically between the development of mission in the Eastern Orthodox Church and that of the Roman Catholic Church for this simple reason that the Roman Catholic Church has been more free to evangelize because of its law of celibacy. It's more difficult to be free when one has a large family in tow. And so that availability was totally there. It was also there in the great new orders of reform, like the Jesuits, insofar as they worked on the will, in such a way that there was no personal will. One espoused not only the command, but also the motive, the reason. And there was complete availability la sainte indifférence, holy indifference, that left souls as free and as powerful as torpedoes to be fired from a submarine anywhere in the church. Conquest. I remember hearing this when a student in Rome living with missionaries, that something of that had been lost and that mission had been reduced to cultural presence. That conquest for Christ, where was it? Paul VI, in one of his teachings, came out with this, let us not leave it to others to evangelize. And by that he meant all these others going from door to door while we bleed and link. Conquest for Christ. We notice how in the Acts of the Apostles 
And actually, even in the gospel itself, the Lord gives instructions to heal those who are sick where they go. That means that, that power is there. And it is one of the means by which the Holy Spirit acts so as himself to preach, because these miracles are great means of conversion. Power, dunamis. Paul talks of it more than once in his epistles. Power, a commission and a committee has little power. A prayer group open to God has far more. And preaching under that drive of the Holy Ghost also has power, and we need to recuperate it, according to the culture we zoom in. This is the memorial of two great missionaries, Zimri Marie-Grine de Montfort, who gave us the true devotion to our Blessed Lady, that great Tractatus, which John Paul II espoused by taking the name of, or the motto, Totus Tuus, all yours, that is, our ladies. And also, about a century later, Saint-Pierre Chanel, a great missionary who became eventually a martyr, and is much honoured in the area of Oceania. It's also in the over at the feast of another great preacher, but also a mystic, Paul of the Cross, founder of the Passionists, who gave so many missions, popular missions all over the world, always with Christ crucified, as in the case of Paul at the centre. They had power because they were based in prayer. Indeed, before being ordained, Louis Grignon de Montfort was given an awareness that he had to found. He founded not only one mission order, but I think two. And we were living just nearly opposite their mother house in Rome. Our Lady was queen of their missions. It is something for our time. For actually, if we look at what we're doing on earth in the church, is work from day to day, we are great bureaucrats, administrators. We keep a structure going. But we need life. It is from that life that structures spontaneously come and not the other way around. But life can actually be faked by gimmicks. True pneumatic life. Spirit-filled life begins at the altar, begins on our knees, begins in prayer groups open and not bossing the Holy Ghost, having brilliant ideas and expecting him to fit in to our plans, perfectly prepared. Gli gli apostoli vediamo che gli apostoli sono in preghiera e che lì lo Spirito Santo ha una parola per loro e sono mandati dalla comunità. Da Antioch inizia dunque questo movimento di evangelizzazione in tutta la, la zona del mare Mediterraneo. Per fortuna il greco rende la cosa possibile, però il linguaggio capito da tutti è quello della potenza, i miracoli. Il Vangelo già il Signore stesso comanda ai cieli di andare, preparare, predicare e di guarire i malati nei villaggi. Dunque dà la potenza e questa potenza è la collaborazione divina che sigilla la predicazione e dà anche un'enorme conversione alla popola, al popolo semplice soprattutto. E nelle missioni popolari, nei paesi semplici, questo si vede ancora, miracoli. Perché senza questa potenza c'è poco in pratica potere sul popolo indigeno, invece il miracolo colpisce subito. Vediamo dunque che la vera missione è fatta di potere, potenza, 
che inizia in preghiera, in cui la volontà di Dio è percepita. La nostra vita, purtroppo, nella Chiesa spesso è basata su il mantenere una struttura, un'amministrazione strutturale. La vita dove è, la potenza dove è. Senza questo è un po' a rovescio la nostra vita. Classicamente la struttura esce dalla vita per proteggerla. Cominciamo in preghiera e lì siamo passivi, non in confronto del Spirito Santo, ma controllati da Lui. Nostro 